decision to take what approach? Okay, so that's, that's a valid question. So let's say I have a week, uh, a meet 12 weeks out, right? Or I, or, or I, I'm brief, let's say, let's say 16 weeks, right? So, because I'm 16 weeks out, I have a lot of time. I don't need to necessarily destroy myself with super heavy deadlifts, um, super heavy low bar squats. If I do that for 16 weeks straight and I try getting to the meet, I'm probably not gonna be, I'm not probably not gonna get there in one piece. Like let's say me and you were boxers, right? And we got, we, we have this big fight coming up in 16 weeks. Are we gonna like go into practice and I'm gonna give you a black eye, you're gonna lose your teeth, your jaw's gonna be broken, you're gonna get to, to the, the, the fight and you're like already like fucked, you know what I mean? Like you, you kinda wanna be like well rested. You wanna, you wanna be like in one piece, you wanna be in like your best shape when you get there. So you don't wanna kill yourself every single day to kinda, kinda avoid that. So say for like the first four weeks of this 16 week period, instead of doing low bar, I do SSB to save my elbows. Say I'm a, a sumo deadlifter. Instead of doing that, I do conventional to save my hips and to build my back. And I bench closer grip to save my shoulders, to increase the range of motion. Um, you know, just make it harder, basically. So then like say 12 weeks out, I get a little more specific. So I might do high bar since it's closer to low bar than the SSB. Um, I might do pause sumo instead of sumo. So, and then close grip, I might do like slightly wider, you know, like I'm getting like, just by basically opening up and getting more specific as time goes on. And then say eight weeks out. It's like low bar, sumo, competition style bench. So it's like, as I get closer to the event I'm gonna be competing in, um, which is gonna be competing low bar, sumo, and competition bench, as I get closer to that, I start doing more of it. So as I, as I get closer to the event, specificity increases and conjugation and exercise variation decreases. Okay, so, cause, I, cause like here, I don't, hey buddy. I don't need to be like the best at low bar squats at this time, but when I'm like close to the meet, I need to be. I need to have that skill trained. It doesn't, you don't have like you don't have to train absolutely year round to have a practice. You know what I mean? What's up? So your training is based on how close you are to like basically. Meet. Like, but like after my meet, I didn't do um, low bar squats for nine weeks. I did SSB exclusively. Mm -hmm. Why? Because I just did low bar squats for like twelve weeks straight. Do I hate low bar squats because I'm doing SSB? No, but I just did them for so long that I'm going to take a step away from it. That way, I kind of have time to like get stronger before I go back to it, you know what I mean? And it also saves this, my, my elbows, my shoulders, and then I can like train my bench harder because of that. You saw, it's just, there's, there's a huge benefit to like not doing your competition style all the time so they can kind of heal and you can strengthen your weaknesses, basically. But if you know something, when, so when I talk about strengthening my weaknesses, it's, it's, SSB is still pretty specific. A conventional deadlift is still pretty specific to sumo in terms of like load, exertion, you know what I mean? It's not like I'm doing like a, a stiff like deadlift with like 135 thing is gonna carry over. Like it's still, you know, the intensity is still relatively high. Like, but it's basically like, also like for this, like say the rep scheme, it might be six to 12 reps. And 12 weeks out, it might be four to 10. Eight weeks out, it might be two to eight. So like, not only does it get more specific as you get closer, in terms of exercise selection, but also it gets more specific in terms of like at the, at the competition we're going to do singles, right? right? So what's more specific to a single, a set of twelve or a set of two? Right. A, a set of two is a lot closer. So like we don't necessarily need to be doing sets of twelve two week, two three weeks out on squat, but if you're doing doubles, you're going to be pretty conditioned for that single. But that doesn't mean sets of twelve on squat are bad, which is because when you do them, they build a lot of fatigue, they build your legs pretty well. But if you, if you did it like two weeks out from meat, you're gonna go to the meat and your legs are gonna be sore. You see what I'm saying? So everything kind of has a time and a place and there's not necessarily like a correct time and a place for it. Each thing's a tool and it's just kind of learning how to apply it and when to apply each one. There's not necessarily a right way to do it, but there's definitely wrong ways, if that makes sense. You know what I mean? Um, we're already on programming. I can break this down a little further. Yeah, because I do, I did have more questions, but if we're gonna move on to this, I don't wanna. No, so can I ask as many questions as you want? I um, might need a better marker though. Yeah, yeah. Someone could hook me up. What's your next one? Uh, you, uh, so, what influences uh, set and rep range at a given percentage? Okay, so that, that's a valid question as well. Um, so, you, I like, I like to start and give myself room to grow. So, say, 
excuse my handwriting, but five by five at sixty percent. Like, well, what's your best bench? Three hundred. So sixty percent of that, I'm guessing, is like two hundred five. Mm -hmm. Does that sound right? Yeah. Okay, let's pretend that's right. So say you do five by five at two hundred five. That'd be fairly easy for you, right? Okay, but next week, five by five at two twenty, right? If that goes really, really well, then you keep rolling. Five by five at two, two, 231, we'll say that. Say this one gets really, 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 really fucking hard, right? There's, there's a few things you could do. You could go to a five by three. Let's make, let's make this a five. A five by three at 245. And basically, like, and I'm getting the same thing. I'm getting more specific dropping reps as load increases. Mm -hmm. You know, that's one way to do it. Um, I could also take a step back and go back to 205 and try to build up 245 on the 5 by 5 There's not, it's basically like you, you want to progress in some way. Right, right. And the, the, the way to progress is to give yourself room to progress. That's why you start so light. Because this actually, even though it wasn't super hard, it fed into this one, it feeds into this one, and then you get the momentum. And then you can like blow shit away. But so it's like start light and add until it's pretty, it's pretty much like, if I'm going to do SSV, I'm going to take this, I'm going to run it to the ground until it gets hard. And as soon as it gets hard and I, like, I feel like I missed a rep or I'm about to miss a rep and I have to rack it, I'm no longer doing SSP. I move on to high bar. Same thing with high bar. Then I move on to low. You see what I mean? So, and I'm asking this kind of as a, as a, as a, a coach writing a program. How do you know how to time the set and rep schemes? Because when I was running your program, it was almost like by the time I got to that five by five on that third week, it got so heavy and I was like, I don't even know if I'm going to be able to continue on that. But luckily the next week, it was changing to like four by two. You got so easier. I was like, how did you time it? So because I knew that week three was going to be hard as hell. So you, is it in three week waves that you usually change? Yeah, it's, it, it's usually, um, yes, but it doesn't have to be three weeks all the time. But usually it's like week one, two, Week three. This this is the method I like to use, and I used to I, I kind of got away from deloads, and a lot of people hate on deloads now. Um, I don't like deloading every fourth week. To be honest, because I, I like training hard. It's my favorite thing to do. I don't want to have to like back off and recover. But I noticed I made a lot more progress actually like prioritizing my recovery. So week one, let's say um, three by three at seventy five percent. Okay, whatever. Next one, next week two, three by three, we'll say at 80 to 83 percent. Okay, so these people, they're getting pretty conditioned to do three by threes. That both, both of these are pretty manageable, um, pretty submaximal work. And then week three, three by three at seven, eight, nine, RPE, seven, eight, nine. So this is where you would push. Like you, you would push really hard. This is where you would basically try the PR try to break your PR, try to, try to do something fucking cool, basically. And then week four, maybe three by three at 65 to 70%, basically. And then I could go to like a four by two for my next four week block. And maybe start the four by two at like 80%, then go to like 84 to 86%, and then do four, like three by two at 789, and PR my doubles instead of my triples. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, so it, it seems kind of like Programming is a little bit of a creative art, almost. Because it's, it's like asking someone how to paint. Yeah, you're kind it, of. You know what I mean? It's like, where do I put blue? Yeah. It's like, do whatever the fuck you want. Yeah, like, yeah. But then you, but people can suck at painting too. Right, and then people right. can be good at painting. But that it's like if you, if you copy someone who's act, like, or you, or you try to copy someone who's an excellent painter, you're trying to copy their work exactly. You're not going to beat them. Mm -hmm. You are not going to do better than them. You you, you never beat someone you like to try to copy 100. percent You know, you can learn from them, but you kind of have to like learn to paint uh -huh. instead of like like learning to paint like paint someone's painting you have to learn to paint yourself and learn how to like like oh i think this color goes with this you know what i mean and what what's right because they're not like a, a like this, this is how i do it i think this works there, there back in the day i probably went six or seven weeks without a D load that also worked is it which one which one was correct which one is correct if you talk to me in a year year and a half from now i probably won't be writing programs like that so it's like oh i write programs now if you the way i think about it if you look if you don't if you look at your program that you wrote someone for two years ago and you don't puke in your mouth a little bit, you're doing this wrong. <laughs> like, you're not like, wow, I, that was fucking terrible. I need to do a lot better. And I, I said, learn, I learned so much. Like, it's like, you're, you're probably not that good of a coach. You know what I mean? Like, you, like, you should kind of like, bomb. It's like, it's like, you know how, like, when you're like 21 
You like look back to when you were 18, you're like, damn, I was stupid. Yeah, yeah. Then you turn 24, you look back to when you were 21, you're like, dude, it, it, I was still, it's, it's like one of those things. Like it's like for, it should be forever ongoing. Like, so it's like, and, all, and honestly experimenting on people is something that like I, I think everyone should do. And a lot of coaches won't, are scared to say that or to, to admit that, but like, how do you figure out what works otherwise? Right, because I, I thought, or my impression of it was that there was a supposed methodology that everyone more. No, no one knows what the fuck they're doing. Okay. As, as, so, as someone who's right. made a career off this and has yeah. sold more programs than the majority of other people in the world of exercise science or fit, I have no clue what the fuck I'm doing. Okay. As someone who just did a seminar that y'all paid attention to, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. <laughs> you know, I, I somewhat, like, I, I, so I, I found traces to success. I like, uh, I've seen trends. I've seen a lot of help. They make a lot of people great. And I know that like some commonalities on it, but do I have an exact science, this exact recipe? No, you, you see what I mean? But like in my head, it's like, I've had a lot of success with this and it's worked pretty well. So I'm going to keep going with it. And as I like keep writing for people, I, and I, I try to like fine tune it more. I'll like watch them, you know, like today and everyone's a little bit different. So for you, like maybe week two is your best week for whatever reason. And week three, you feel like shit. So if I'm watching, like, you know, you know how like in the stock market you watch for trends, yeah, yeah, but yeah. no one knows what the fuck the stock market yeah, like, yeah, actually yeah. is. Like if someone acts like they know what they're telling you about the stock market, they're lying to you and they're trying to get money from you. Yeah. Basically, they're trying to seem smarter than that. Programming is pretty much the same thing. You know, like they, 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 they don't have anything like figured out 100% perfect. But that doesn't mean that some people aren't better at watching the stock market and predicting it than others. But the people that are better at watching the stock market and predicting are people that have done it and have watched the trends, have studied the trends and learned to see them. You know what I mean? That's, that's what programming really is. More so than like, oh, well, this percentage and this exact calculation. Like, no, that's, that's not how it, you know what I mean? So you're essentially kind of like, if you could kind of simplify it, what are the principles that you're sticking to when writing a program? Is it? Let me explain to you very simply. I was talking to one of my mom's friends who like doesn't really exercise or lift weights or do anything. And she was trying to exp ask me about like her workout routine and making products, you want to lose weight. And she, she, she has no understanding of like sats, reps, RPE, percentage, none of that bullshit. She doesn't, it's beyond her, right? She's like, well, you know, I walk with my dumbbells. I have these pink dumbbells and I walk this far. I'm like, okay, what house do you stop at? So, well, you know, the, the blue one, like, okay, well, you go like four houses down tomorrow. And then the next day I add like two more houses. You know, like it doesn't have to be fucking rocket science. It doesn't have to be this, this secretive method. It's like more, like a, a simple progression. That's, that's, you know? And it's like, can you do it? If not, like maybe like, okay, maybe we took off a bit too much, but like, also that's why you like start light and give you like, if I, let's, let's say I'm a doctor, all right? I'm a doctor now. Um, you come to me, um, you have ADHD. I'm gonna prescribe you Adderall. Do you start at like the highest dosage possible? Right. Or do you start like like 10 mix or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we see how 10 mix does. If you get nothing from 10 mix, we go to 15. And then if that doesn't work, we go to 20. You see what I mean? But I don't fucking start you off at like 80 yeah. and then try to work back. If I get my grandma and she's like, hey, I want to I want to start jogging. I'm like, all right, marathon day one. It's like, all right, no, let's, let's go for a walk. Let's, let's, let's go for a walk and try to like walk around the neighborhood and like, you know, and then like next time, let's, let's walk around the neighborhood for two laps. And then next time, maybe, maybe we'll jog a, a little. You see what I'm saying? But it's not like there's this, um, there's so many different progression schemes like, I'm gonna show you a few options here. Say you have, you do three sets of 12 um, at 100 pounds on lap pull downs and you have 60 seconds rest between each set. You have your stopwatch and you're being 100% brutally honest with yourself on what 60 seconds is, right? So I, the way I can progress this one way would be three by 12 at 105 pounds, you know, 60 seconds rest. That's hard, right? Or you can do three by 13 at 100 pounds, the same weight, but one rep more, same rest time. Or if I didn't even wanna like, like change the reps or the sets, three by 12 at, 100 pounds and you have 45 seconds rest, right? Because now I'm doing it in less time. Even if it's only 15 seconds, I'm doing the same weight, the same sets, the same reps. Like, say you do a five by five at, you know, 60%, 205. We, we talked about that earlier, right? You get three minutes between each set, pretty manageable. What if you get one minute? It's, it's a lot harder, you might fail, right? 
So the Daytona rest period is definitely a way to increase intensity without even having to alter the reps or the sets. And it's basically like, if, you, if I wanted to, I could also do this. I could do four by 12, four sets of 12 at 100 pounds, 60 seconds rest. Which one of these is the correct progression? You know what I mean? Yeah. Which, which progression method do you see to be correct? Right. Like, it gets to a certain point, like if I'm doing like three by 20 and I'm trying to bump it up to three sets of 30, I'm not saying that wouldn't work, but like, it's kind of like, you, it's kind of like, the thing is you don't want to be too obsessed with like progressing one. Like, like sometimes I might want to add a set, I might want to add a rep, I, w I might want to increase the load, I might increase the load and drop the weight, like by two, two I mean, drop the reps by two, two and you know, up, the, up by 20 pounds. Like it's basically just like make it harder, yeah. In some way, like it's, it's not even like maybe, maybe you keep the rest, the the reps, the sets, the weight, and the rest time all exactly the same. But it's like instead of like say my, I'm benching, instead of like my pause being like guys, you know, like I, I pause longer. Yeah. Like there's there's if if you're doing like a say I do three sets of five with a, a four second tempo on squat with two hundred pounds. Next week I do six second tempo on the way down. There's so many ways you can manipulate it. You know what I mean? And the, the thing about being a, an artist or a programmer is figuring out how to do that. And like, in, in what ways you, you want to do it. It's not like there's the, you, it's, it's yes. It. Like it's, it's, not, it's, it's not so, but my, my general recommendation, start with the minimum dosage, like if, if, if you were prescribing someone Adderall, or if you like, say you've never taken caffeine, you don't start at 300 mg. Like you take 100 mg and it'll increase your performance. Then when 100 mg stops working, you go to like 150. 125, you feel me? Then you go to 200, but you like, you start out with a minimum dose and you add more as needed. Because a lot of times, like, so like, like Jimmy, let's like say, say I have you do 20 sets of 20 on squat. Are, are you even gonna recover or like make progress from that? You're probably just gonna die, right? Like it's like more volume, more work isn't always better. So it's kind of like you have to, you gotta find like, mag, like little mediums, so basically. Aside from the more volume, more work, what are some of the other, other big mistakes that you've probably seen in programming or people attempting to program? What are some of the don'ts that you've seen? I've seen so many. <laughs> Maybe a lot of them were wrote by me too. <laughs> Top three. I've, all right, for one, I would say you're not as smart as you think you are. That applies to me, that applies to you, that applies to any coach you meet. No one has everything figured out, everyone has their gaps in knowledge. Mm -hmm. If people put all their faith in one person to learn from, I think that's a mistake. I would love for all of you to learn from me, but I don't want you to leave here and think I'm the guy who absolutely knows everything and I'm the only person that knows anything. You shouldn't listen to anyone else. You see what I mean? You should learn from... People ask me, so where'd you get your... Uh, what's your source? Do you think I sit here and watch fucking Fox News? And that's where I, like I got all this from? You know what I mean? Like I have one source of information. Like I, I've never looked... Like you, 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 you want to get your information from all over. You want to challenge your perspectives. Um, hire a mentor. I've, I've, I've been writing programs since for, for a living since I was 19 years old, 25 now, I've been doing it six years. I've, I've created a lot of fucking freaks. Um, I still have a coach. Why? Because I'm, I'm not as smart as I think I am. And it's also because like, I write my own program, it's like, I'm not gonna give myself three sets of 15 on squat with two minute rest. And do that for eight weeks straight. You're just, you're just not gonna be that mean to yourself. You're not, you're not gonna, you're not, you know what I mean? You're just, if you have your own personal biases in the way, you're, you're gonna do shit you're good at. You're gonna do things you enjoy. Now, when I write for people, well, like, Nick, I'm trying to find the thing you're the most absolutely god awful at that makes you hate your life the most when you do it. And then I'm like, hey, we're gonna, we're, gonna, we're gonna murder this. We're gonna hang out here and spend as much time here as possible. You know what I mean? Like, a coach helps you do that, um, where I feel like a lot of people, their personal bias gets away. And I think some people care so much about the program, they put so much weight onto it, that's, that's almost, a, almost a mistake, too. Because like you can get so caught up looking for the perfect program or the perfect coach, it's like maybe you're just a bitch. You know what I mean? Like, uh, like are you sleeping? Are you eating? Are you drinking water? What's your intensity like? How seriously are you taking these rest periods? Are you are you talking to people before you're doing your sets? You know what I mean? Like, what what, what are the things that are actually holding you back outside? Of them? Because I have people that that hire me or they buy my programs, and you know my programs are pretty fucking good. You know, they, they might be, be the best one that's ever wrote, but they've, I've seen some people make some exceptional progress on it. I've seen people make, not make progress on it. Was it the program? You know what I mean? Okay. Like, there's a program everything. The program's a lot. Like, I think having a program is a usually important piece, but it's not like, I could be the best in the world at putting some shit in an Excel sheet, but I can't, it won't make everyone a world champion. You, like, some people, you know what I mean? Like, if someone wants to be a world champion, they're willing to fucking come in here and be that dog. Like, that's more important. Then if I give them the correct 
number of reps on a lap pull down with 100 pounds. You see, it's like them being an absolute animal more so than, so it's kind of like, I feel like a lot of people, they, they, they were looking for like magic formula. And I, I, I catch myself doing it too, because you always want to find something better. I'm not saying not to do that. But you can't become so obsessed with that, that it's like, like a five by five works. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like that, that will work for everyone. If you do it hard enough, you're doing it intense enough, you're tracking your rest time, you're doing it with enough intention, you're taking your shit series outside. The gym. It doesn't need to be some like secretive programming no one else has. Like the basics have stood the test. You're not gonna reinvent a wheel. You know, like the wheel has worked. Whether people have already like Ed Cohen was freakishly strong back in the day. No one's in, like no one's really invented like a, a bunch of crazy exercises that made a huge difference since then. What they did, they just high bar squats, front squats, close grip bent, the basics. They, they, you, you don't you don't get to the fucking NBA without knowing how to do a chest pass or knowing how to dribble. You know what I mean? Like you, everything is like, it's like math. Like, and the only thing about like powerlifting is like, or weight training or bodybuilding, whatever. People start as like, I need the advanced program. I need this. I need the program. Some kid at the gym was like, I want your program. Can I get it? It's like it says bench four thirty for five sets of five with two minute rest. What are you going to do with that? Like, is it, you, good luck. You know what I mean? Like, it's not that, that advanced program is not for you. Like, it's, it's not for everyone. It's just. Like learning, learning to look at like where you currently are without where someone else is. And like, it, it's very easy to be influenced by everyone else's training, especially in the world we live in where you see everyone else's training and social media has definitely made the world exercise science like explode and everyone's learning from each other and that's why everyone's getting so strong so fast. But at the same time, like, I notice when I look at other people and I'm so obsessed, like, damn, he's making great progress doing this, I need to do this. And I try to copy him. You don't, like, like I said, you don't beat someone, you copy. Like, but when, when I'm like sitting there, I'm like focusing on my own shit. I'm like, hey, I need to beat my lap pull down by one rep. I need to hit my protein. I need to do this, this, this. And, and I, I become so process oriented that the, the result kind of just comes. Like, I don't even have to like, like focus on the result because I'm just so focused on like detachment and focused on like, you know, nailing my sets, my rest, my rest time. It just, the, result, the results just come. You know what I mean? I don't even have to worry about them. Like, if I worry about the, the, the things to do to get there, they'll, you feel me? You were going to say something, I thought? Uh, no, I, it was very short, but in regards to your question, uh, I see a lot of people when it comes to pro programming, they, they like, I think it comes down to, oh, like one less rep or just five pounds up or like, and just like leaving at that in regards to the progression, uh, something as much as like, that's where like video review or just like in-person coaching plays a big role because it's like progression can also just be improving your quality of rep. That's another one. You know. It doesn't even have to be a pause or a longer tempo or a shorter rest period. Like if you just move it better, it's a lower RPE. The bar speed's higher. There's so many variables to track progress. Um, so it, it's it's good to kind of like try to keep track of all of them majority of the time. You know, like well, well, it's like data that can be tracked can be progressed. It's very right. well. I guess because a lot of the confusion also might even come from I've written some clients like some programs where it gets them. 50, 40 pounds on their total, but some of them have gotten them like 100 pounds on their total. So I was like, I'm like, well, is this program the better one or is this one? But, but maybe it could, it could, but maybe, yeah, or like I used to, I used to coach a girl, Celine Crum, she won, she won the USAPL Pro Series. I was coaching Shane Hunt at the same time. I had both of them doing a very similar program. It was like squat three times a week, bench three times, deadlift once, I think. They both made exceptional progress, but definitely worked better for Celine. Why do I think that is? Because I feel like it was very high frequency, very high volume. I feel like Celine was a smaller girl. She's lifting smaller weights so she can recover from it easier. Shane was a 275 pound fucking gorilla. He's having to deadlift 900 pounds once a week. You don't recover from that as fast as a girl who's 140 pounds deadlifting 400. You know what I mean? So it's like, as, as, that the stronger you are, usually the more time you're gonna need to recover, your age becomes a variable. There's so many different multifaceted things that can be like, what makes this program better for this person? And it's like other people, the other dudes in here that are talking about their, their work life. You know, it's like, oh, well, I have like, I have one of my best friends who my, my garage gym um, is, was in his backyard. He, he's like, he's like the CEO of a company called Ard Trucking. It's a huge trucking company, one of the biggest ones in the country. He's, he's, got, he's got adult shit to do. You know what I mean? He can't spend three hours in, in the gym bullshit. So for him, it's like, hey, let's, three days a week, let's focus on being consistent, making product, that's great, it's enough for, for him because he has so many other life stressors. But if I have someone who comes to me and they're an online coach, it's like, hey dude, I woke up, I did a cold plunge, I got, I had my slept with my blackout curtains, got 10 hours of sleep, hit my protein, took my creatine, I'm on trend. It's like, yeah, you're probably gonna recover better than this dude who's like, 
who, who slept sit three hours a night, had 10 grams of protein Perfect. yesterday, and is vegan. You know what I mean? Like, you're just... Because I remember you sharing that meme of, like, you know, like, the retard meme of, they're like, I just live heavy when I feel good, and then it's like, well, the science says it's like, I just live heavy. The, the Dunn Kruger good. bell curve? Yeah, so... How, <coughs> Uh, how much consideration do you take into like the science, science-based people? Because you know how people like uh, I throw all that shit away. I don't think it matters. Yeah, the MRV total number of. Well, how do you, the MRV is different for everyone, and even like my MRV is not the same all the time. My my maximum recover volume was lower this week because I was traveling. Right. And my sleep yeah. was like it's not like it's this. Con it's a moving target. Because yeah, yeah. So it's not like you have like this one number. The thing that I hate about the science group, um, they're always small and weak. And then I like, you look at like the Chad, like golden era physiques, which, which I consider to be the best physiques that were ever built. It's like all of them had different approaches. Mike Mincer and Dorian Yates, they were the high intensity, low volume guys. You had Tom Plaps, who's like gonna do legs once every two weeks. You have Arnold, who's doing chest and back once every three days and arms the next day, doing supersets and this and this. And all of them built glorious physiques in their own. They, they figured out what works for them, Yeah. you know? Um, that's kind of what I feel like I did. Like my ATG stuff, like we're going to talk about Nordic curls, split squats. There's not one study done on knees where they're bent fully. Like when like, like every study done on knees is where it's like bent about 90 degrees. Not one study has been done here. There's no science there. The, if we talk about like, there's one study in science that's talking about like the underhand bench press activates your upper chest like on an EMG study, like 150% more. We figured it out. There's always a new study. There's, there's, all, there's always a new study beating the last. That's, that's the entire fucking point of science. Is that we're trying to like be wrong, so we're less wrong. So you can't put your foundation. No, so so it's like because it's wrong. Yeah. If we love talking, dude, exercise science in the world of that this. If we talk about protein synthesis, it's like, hey, if you spread your protein throughout the day, it helps make gains. We we discovered like that that became a study like like seven years ago or some shit. You know who's been doing that since the '60s, the '50s? Bodybuilders. Yeah. Did you did they need a fucking study to do that? And it's, it's like, hey, this dude's like really fucking jacked and he does it. Like I, whenever I was younger, I would, I would like look at, well, well I, I follow the, the science and this and if it fits your macro. Like when I, when I was really young and I was smaller, I used to be like really into the science and the studies. And like if you remember, I don't know if anyone in here was like lifting at this time, but like 10 years ago, if it fits your macros became yeah. very, very popular yeah. uh, like throughout the world. And it was like, they, the train of thought was basically like, you can eat whatever the fuck you want as long as you hit your macros. You can eat trash, it doesn't matter. You're like your body composition will blah, 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 it'll be solid. And like the most important thing in terms of like weight loss, weight gain is calories. That is correct. But that does not, like even if you lose weight eating trash food, that doesn't mean it's like Quality. optimal. Yeah. Cause like, well, who, you know, you, we, we just know that it's like you're hitting your macros, eating McDonald's, you're not gonna do as well as the guy who's eating fucking spinach, quinoa, rice, beef, eggs, kimchi, like real food. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's just not, the food quality is a thing. But if you looked at the science and trusted the science at that time, it's like, oh, well this is whatever. But then, then 10 years, like, like if I trusted that, and I like, and I went completely by it, and I was just eating junk food all the time, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like, like why would I do that when I feel like over the, you kind of like, Science is cool, but respecting your elders is cooler, in my eyes. So like, I could be like, if I could have this really like nerdy kid that squats 225, give me a science explanation on how to squat, but there's a dude squatting a grand, and he like, gives me a pointer, I'm definitely taking his, even if it's not scientifically fucking based, like his, his existence is enough. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, that, that's how I feel. Like, I like, it's like, it's cool, you wanna look at it, you wanna, you wanna be re well reviewed with it, but you don't wanna like, build your foundation on yeah, basically, your, your foundation should be on like what's worked for you, what you've made yeah. work, what you know what I mean, and like you should use that and like question your own views constantly. But like it's like, ooh, a new study came out where bench press is terrible for chest, so I never bench press again. It's like uh, I built a pretty damn, pretty damn solid chest bench pressing. You know what I mean? So why do I? What do I think of this study? You know, you have to you have to be able like think critically, basically about what you're even even if it draws a conclusion for you. You feel me? Yeah. Like I. Uh, so, can I say one thing too, just to kind of add to what you're saying? Yes. Um, so a lot of the times why it, it causes problems is because a lot of like studies and stuff through college and universities, there are all these people who are studying other studies, who are studying other studies, a lot of the time, right? I have my bachelor's from the University of Utah in, in communication. I learned more from just fucking talking to people every day than I did from studying communication. 100%. Like that's how it goes. You don't want to do the rocket science program. You want to keep it simple, stupid. Like that's what a trainer. It is. Yeah. Look, it is not complicated what we're doing. 
lift heavier rock, you get bigger. Like, yeah. do, I, do I need a fucking study to do? No, like there's the study of Milo and the bull. Have you heard of that? Yeah. Where like the young boy has his pet bull and he just carries it for time and he gets bigger. Do I need a fucking study for that? Like it's kind of like, like I feel like when everyone first starts lifting, it's like, yeah, the bigger guy's stronger. You, then you get deep into it. You know, you know, hypertrophy and strength are two different. Yeah. Like, it's like, why am I bigger than you? Yeah. You know, like, well, if that was true, like it doesn't. Another thing, like science, it's not even necessarily the truth, but you kind of have to look where the money is. What yeah. motive do they have to get that? You know, I feel like we've definitely become more aware of that over like the past two to three years. You know what I mean? Instead of follow the science, follow the money. Yeah. So it's like the funding. Is the, is the thing for these studies. So like, be, like there's a bunch of people that fund like veganism and like studies on that and make it seem like it's like the healthiest thing in the world. Why? Because they don't want to see red meat. You know, they, they, they don't. It's, it's, it's just, agenda. Yeah. So it's like, so what agenda is being pushed and why? Like, why did they come to this conclusion? Like, where, who funded this study? That's another thing. Lane, Lane Norton, um, he's a dude who's got like a PhD in nutrition. He was, I don't know if y'all know who he is, but he had, a, he had a company called Cybation or whatever, and he, he would produce a bunch of studies. And right before he, right, he dropped a, the, the Extend BCA from Cybation or whatever, and then like a month later, he did a study on BCAs and how it had this huge positive impact, impact on protein synthesis and increasing your training, blah, blah, blah. What motive do you think he had to, to make that study? So, so does that mean BCAs are great? I've heard, you know what I mean? Yes. Like, personally, I would rather just have a fucking protein shake before I went to the gym. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't want to put money in this guy's pocket because he pulled like he's a snake oil salesman. You feel me? So it's like you kind of, you got, you got to keep all that in mind. And sometimes, like I didn't, like there, I used to be a huge fan of Lane Norton. I, I remember I read that study when it first dropped, and I was like going and buying the BCAs left and right. But it's like now it's like I know a little better. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, eh, what does that, what does that study mean? Like, what does it actually mean? Like, not, not what does it say, not what do they make it say, but like, you see, you see what I mean? He could, yeah, because I read practical programming, and that's kind of like what he talked about. It, he, uh, he mentions it in the beginning where he's like, a lot of studies are based off of, uh, it's university students who don't actually know already what they're talking about. They're not coaches, they're not athletes, training untrained people, and then basically making a conclusion based off of that outcome, because no athlete would dedicate their time to university to take away from their training mm -hmm. so that they can study them. And then it's also like the university wants to study people that have 800 pound deadlifts. Yeah. What the fuck? How, where, where are you gonna find 10 of these people? Yeah. In one state? Yeah. You know, maybe if you're in Texas, if, you, if you're like with their friends, you get them all together, but like, you see what I mean? Yeah. It's a lot easier to find like all those untrained individuals, but does that study apply to the trained individual? You see what I'm saying? Oh, there, there, that's another example. There's a study, it's like one gram, no. No, it's like five grams of creatine is perfect. Yeah. You don't need 10 grams, five grams of creatine is perfect for everyone. Everyone's heard that, right? Mm -hmm. So I, my, let, let, let me give you a perspective to question that study. I have 240 pounds, 250, somewhere in there. You know, I'm, I'm kind of a fucking unit. I got a fair amount of muscle on me. So why is my creatine requirement the same as hers yeah. when she's half my size? Her kidney's probably half my size, has half the, half the blood in her body. You know what I mean? So why do we both? Deserve five. Why is five grams optimal for both of us? Yeah. It just, that was just you just common sense tells you that doesn't make sense. Yeah. You know what I mean? But it's like you look at the study and you take it as an absolute. Now, does that does it mean that study is pointless? No, but like, it's, it's it's what you do with it. You know what I mean? Where I feel like a lot of people, I feel like when uh, this, this 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 might be an asshole thing to say, but I feel like a lot of people when they aren't big or strong or they haven't actually accomplished things. If I can talk in really really big words. Yeah. The, hyper, the hypertrophy in the macro cycle here in the, in the fourth phase of the, I sound really fucking smart. Yeah. I sound like I know something you don't. And that makes, that makes people want to pay you. You know what I mean? If I don't have something else to sell, like so if I'm not a unit myself, if, I, my, if my existence isn't enough. You see what I'm saying? So it's kind of a way to like, but I don't, I don't know. Like I feel, when I talk to Ed Cohn, or I talk to people that are like the grace of what they do and they explain things to me, it's very simple. I can understand it. It is not above me. I, I get a great teacher. It's like I can understand. Like even though they like you, you can get some teachers who like know the topic really well, but they don't know how to like execute. Yes, how to teach it to you. They don't know how to, like like so you understand it. Yeah. But like they can be great at themselves. There's a lot of people like that, you know. Oh, should we hop into fucking split squats and Nordics now? Are there any more questions? Okay. All right.